G'day, I'm James, and welcome to this experience on Garden Paths. This is the story of fractions and probability and the infinite. In fact, we're going to draw very simple visual diagrams that let us play with those wonderful concepts. And I'm so excited to get started that I just want to get started. So, let's get started. Let me get, begin with an example of a garden path system. A very simple one. So what I'm going to draw here is a path. Let's just draw a line. This represents a path in a garden. And people will walk down this path and have a jolly good time, admiring the scenery, feeling the sunshine on their face, having a wonderful time on a garden stroll. But as they come down this path, they eventually come to a fork. And at the fork, they can either turn left or they can turn right. So they make a choice. So let's say, the people that go left, let's have them go down the path and we'll say they head to what I'm going to call house number A. So whoever chooses to go left at the fork will keep going down the path, down the path, down the path, down the path, down the path and end up in house A. And the people turning right are going to end up, you guessed it, in the house I will call house B. So for those that turn right, we'll go down the path doo -doo 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 -doo, and end up in house B. That's it. There is a, an example of a very simple system of garden paths. Grand. So what I want to do is actually now imagine sending some people down this system, down this garden path system. In fact, a very large number of people. Let's say, let's send down 100 people. So let me draw 100 people for you. Well, okay, I won't actually draw people, but I will draw dots to represent people. So here's 10 people. Here's another 10 people. Here's another 10 people. So I'm going to draw dots of people. In fact, I'm going to draw a whole bunch of dots, a whole block of dots representing 100 people. So something like that is 100 people. So imagine if we really did send 100 people down the system, and when they get to the fork, they each just choose randomly, left or right, equally likely say, then we expect about half of them, 50 of them, to go left and end up in house A, and about the other half, 50 of them, to end up in house B by choosing right. So I'm going to represent that ideal situation, that sort of thought experiment in my mind, as follows. I can say this block of people, in an ideal circumstances, I would expect half of them, 50 of them, to go to house A, and 50 of them to end up in house B. Now you probably can't read that, it's pretty smudgy, but I don't even need to draw the dots. I don't even need to draw 100 dots. In fact, it doesn't even have to be 100 people. It just has to be some large number of people. I could just draw a much cleaner picture just by doing a block of people, like that, don't have to say what the number is, some huge number of people, and of a huge number, I expect half to end up in house A, half to end up in house B. So that diagram there represents the res results I expect to see, ideally, from this path of garden paths, the system of garden paths. Got that? That's it. That's all I want to play with this, exper with this experience, it, with this, in this experience, because it's so cool and so fabulous. In fact, just playing with garden paths in their own right are kind of fun. Let's start drawing some more complicated examples. I'll show you what I mean by that. In fact, let's go up a notch. Let's go to three houses. Instead of having just house A and house B, let's add to this a house C. Three houses. Let's try analyzing this garden path system. Let's start with a path. People walk down, have a jolly fine time walking down. And this time, they first come to a three-way fork. Let's say those that go left at that fork go, go walking along, keep walking, walking for a jolly fine time until they come to another fork. Let's make it a two-way fork this time. Let's say those that go left here go to house A, and those that go right here say go to house B. All right. So the people that went left at the very beginning split between A and B. The people that go straight at the very beginning, let's say, I don't know, we'll just have them go straight to house B. Let's do that. Those that go right at that three-way fork, let's have them come to another fork. Oh, let's make it a three-way fork. Okay, of those that go left there, let's have them head along all the way over to house A. Now, do you see what I'm trying to draw there? I don't want people to be able to like, skip and jump over paths. When they're on this path to A, they have to stay on path A and really will end up here. They won't cross over to another path. I'm trying to indicate that there. Does that make sense? Uh, those that go straight here, let's have them just go straight to house B. And those that go to the right, let's have them go straight to house C. All right. So there is a slightly more complicated system of garden paths. And my question is, what proportion of people do I expect to end up in each house? Um, in fact, I might ask a simpler question first, because I look at this, I see house C only has one path coming to it. So maybe this, this uh, house will it end up with the least number of people? What do you think? In which case, do you think we can guess which house is going to end up with the most number of people? Would it be house B, because it's got three paths? One path, three paths, two paths? Maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, in fact, if you look at this, one path, two paths, does that mean I expect double the number of people in house A than I do in C? 
and two powers and three halves, uh, three powers? Do I expect like a two to three ratio of people there or something? I wonder. In fact, the real question is what I said earlier. What actually is the setup of uh, fractions of people that end up in each house? What fraction of people end up in house A? What fraction of people end up in house B? What fraction of people end up in house C? Can we work it out? The answer is yes, we can. Let's do it. So I'm going to follow this idea and imagine I have a huge block of people. And I will just draw on this area diagram what's happening to all these people. Because they first come to a three-way fork. So these people split into thirds. So we get a third of the people, third of the people. This third goes left. This third goes straight. This third goes to the right. My picture's not very good. They should be equal thirds. But hopefully the idea is clear enough. All right, so let's analyze what happens to each third of people. This third, the people that went left. What do they do? They come down, they come down, and they split into two, which goes into A or B. So this third of people split into two. The people that go left go to house A. The people that go right go to house B. All right, so I think I've analyzed what happens to the left people. The people that went middle, the straight path, well, they just went straight to house B. So all of those people went to house B. People on the right, the turn right at the initial fork, they split three ways. So they split into thirds. So I've got a third of a third, a third of a third, and a third of a third. Uh, I guess that's ninths, is that right? Ninths, yes. Third of a third is a ninth. All right, those that go left here go straight to house A. Those that go straight here go to straight to house B. Those that go right there end up in house C. Beautiful. So this diagram here encapsulates what proportion of people end up in each house. In fact, you can see right now, house C has the least number of people in it. It's the least amount of area in my area model. And house B has the most? All right, so my intuition was correct, at least right then and there, it looks like C has the least number of people, B has the uh, most number of people, and A has the middle number of people. All right, what are the actual numbers? Um, okay, I'm gonna work on the easiest one first. I think C is the easiest one to work, because C only appears here. And if we said it already, that is actually one third of one third of the square. So C is representing one ninth of the square. So that means one ninth of the people are ending up in house C. All right, great. Um, which one's easiest to work out next? I'm thinking A is next. So I see an A there. In fact, it's also one third of one third. So I know that little part there is one ninth. But there's also A over here. All right. So A is this part, which is, what is that? That's, that whole thing's a third. So that's half of a third. Oh, so that's one sixth. Oh, so the proportion of people that end up in house A is one sixth of the people plus one ninth of the people. One sixth plus one ninth. Okay, I've got to work that out. Um, I guess I'm going to think 18 so that's what, 3 18 is 1 6 plus 2 18 makes a 1 9th, yes? So that means 5 18 of the people end up in house A. 5 18 of them. 5, make my 5 look like 5. There we go. Oh, I made it worse. 5 18 Ooh, ooh, um, 1 9th and 5 18 Do you know what? I think it'd be better for comparing these fractions, these answers. Let's put this in 18 as well. Let me think of this as 2 18 because now I can see 2 18 compared to 5 18 You know, sometimes it's best not to simplify fractions. 2 18 is good there, because now I can compare it to 5 18 and I see actually A is more than double than the number of people end up in C. So I know it's one path and two paths, but it doesn't mean there's a ratio of 1 to 2. It turns out A has more than double the number of people than C. That's curious. All right, that was one B, the final one. Oh, do you know what? Do you know what? I suppose I could add up one six, one third plus one ninth, but look, I can see the answer here. Because two eighteenths of the people are here, five eighteenths of the people are here, so that's seven eighteenths of the people are accounted for. Where are the rest of the people? Well, the rest of the people must all be in house B. So seven eighteenths are elsewhere, that leaves uh, eleven eighteenths. Eleven eighteenths must be in house B. And I bet if you add up those pieces, that's 11 18 as well. All right, so that's it. So look, yes, it is true, B at the most number of people, but it's not a one to two to three ratio. It's a weird two to five to 11 ratio. I would never have guessed that. But I love this area model, because you can actually draw the area, see what happens, and actually see what proportion of people end up in each house, and actually working out the fractions is kind of fun. In fact, I like this so much, I'm gonna do another one. But let me clean the board. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Here's another garden path system, and look how complicated it is this time. Uh, can we see what's going on? Uh, it's three houses, A, B, C. People come down, they come to a two-way fork. Those that go left split in a three-way fork, either going to house A 
or going to house B, or going to another split, another two-way fork which splits between B and C. Whoa, complicated on that left side. The people that go to the right initially, however, come to a three-way fork that takes them straight to either house A, house B, or house C. All right, any predictions on which house is going to end up with the most number of people? Which were the least? If I look at this, I see there's two paths to A, three paths to B, two paths to C. Does that mean A and C are going to be equally the same number, of the proportion of people, but smaller than B? Hmm, I don't know if I can trust the counts of paths. Anyhow, pause the video right now if you want to try this one for yourself, because I'm about to do it my turn, myself as well. And we'll then we can compare answers. So pause right now, I'm about to do it. Okay, did you pause? I'm about to do this one myself. Let's see the proportion of people that end up in each house. Um, I think a little bit of space right here. I'll just do it right here. Do, 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 do. All right, first of all, people come to a two-way split. So they split in half, great. The people go left, split into three, okay. Split into three, so I've got half of a third, half of a third, half of a third. Oh, it might be good to think sixths right now. Keep in mind, these are six, a sixth, a sixth, a sixth. I could even write it down somewhere. But I'll keep it six in my brain for now. So these people went either to A, or they went to B, or they went to, oh, they went this way and split between B and C. Oh, so this is half of a six and half of a six between B and C. Half of a six, half of a six, twelfth, twelfth. Okay, all right, great. Whew. People that went to the left, I think we've done them. People that go right, they come to a three-way fork, so they also split into thirds. So there's a sixth, a sixth, and a sixth. Great. Those that go left go to A, those that go straight go to B, and those that go right go to C. Beautiful. I see the answer. So it looks like, uh, ooh, A and C are definitely not the same. It looks like A is all the way across. That's a, a sixth and a sixth. Oh, that's a third of the square. Actually, I can see A is one third right there. B is one third plus a bit more, and C is less than one third. So these aren't equal. These aren't equal. All right, so let's see, which one we're gonna work at next. Let me, let me work at C next. So that's a sixth we said. That's a sixth, and that we said was half of a sixth, is a twelfth. So C is a sixth plus a twelfth. Um, that's two twelfths plus one twelfths. It makes that three twelfths. I'm gonna keep it as three twelfths right now, because I have a feeling twelfths might be good for this problem. In which case, let me write A as four twelfths. So yes, number of people in house C is slightly smaller than the number of people in house A. Being two paths, trying to be irrelevant. Three and four is the ratio they come in. Which means, oh, without doing any work, three twelfths of the people are here, four twelfths of the people are here, so seven twelfths of the people are not in house B, which means the rest of them, five twelfths of the people, must be in house B. And I bet that's five twelfths you worked that out. Whoa, okay. So actually, the number of people in each house isn't that much isn't that different. Three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths. Pretty close to each being a third of the people. Just slightly more people in B, slightly less people in C. Did you get those answers as well? Because if you did, let's try this next one. I'm going to make this next one insanely complicated. And we can try that, try that next. Let me clean the board though. Okay, here's a crazy one. Try this one. Four houses, A, B, C, and D. People come down, they first go to a three-way fork. Those that go right go straight to house D. Not too bad. Those that go straight come to a three-way fork with the percentage of either to B, C, or a split between C and D. Those that go to the left come to a three-way fork, which either sends them to C, or to B, or to a two-way fork, which sends them to either to C or a two-way fork, which sends them either to A or B. Whoa. Okay. Can you draw an area picture that shows what fraction of people end up in each house? Wow, wow, wow. Good luck. Have fun.